Hello. In this video, I will be describing the creatures in such a lethal company. And just as a spoiler warning, this video will spoil the game significantly. With that, I recommend that anyone who is planning to play this game or has not fully experienced the game to skip this video, as learning about these creatures in-game adds a lot to the overall experience of Lethal Company. This is your chance to leap before getting spoiled. Each creature will have its log shown with some footage of it, and I will try my best to describe its mechanics. This video is structured to describe enemies in an order that you would typically see them throw an in-game day, starting with outdoor creatures you'll see throughout the day, then traps, followed by indoor enemies, ending with outdoor nocturnal enemies. I hope you enjoy this video, as it is definitely different from what I have been posting. Starting off in the passive outdoor creature section, we have roaming locusts. Locusts will slowly move around the outdoor map in a swarm while making a distinct chirping slash mild buzzing sound. Locusts are completely harmless and will interact with the player by simply dispersing if they get too close to each other. Next up in this section are manta coils. Much like roaming locusts, they are completely harmless to a player. They are usually seen flying in the air or on the ground in small groups. If you get too close to them, they will fly off and squawk. Their main purpose, along with locusts, is to add an atmosphere to the early days on moons, and to remind the player that while human life is abandoned the moons, they are still inhabited by wildlife. Circuit bees are the last entry in this section. They are the only creature at the moment capable of killing a player outdoors early in the day, ignoring the eclipse modifier of course. I have grouped them in with passive outdoor creatures because they will never kill a player unless provoked by getting too close to their hive. Their mode of behavior is to guard an item, this being their hive, by sitting on top of it as a swarm. If a player approaches the hive while the swarm is on it, they will take flight and chase the player for a short period of time before returning to where they left their hive. The hive they guard can be valued quite highly, often worth over 100 credits, which is often why players aggravate them in the first place. If the hive is left alone, the bees will return to their passive states and sit on the hive again. However, if their hive is missing, they will remain in their angered swarm state and fly around the outdoor map randomly at an extreme speed until they find a player to chase or their hive to sit on once again. Without proper coordination with crewmates, stealing a hive can easily result in casualties, making the day ahead more difficult or reducing however much money your crew had saved. Turrets start off the currently small trap section, and just as a note, no traps have log entries at the moment. Turrets are stationary and will permanently remain in the indoor map throughout the day. They scan a broad angle ahead of them for any players that walk ahead of them. If a player does this, they will make a distinct sound and shine an orange laser on whichever player they are targeting, and after a short delay, if the player is still visible to the turret, they will unleash a volley of lead into the player. Turrets will not target enemies, making them a complete nuisance. They do however have many ways of getting around them, such as Exposing yourself for a short period of time to them so they cannot start firing at you. Maneuvering outside of a turret's cone of vision by staying behind it. As it rotates while scanning, you can move around opposite of its barrel. If it does lock onto you, however, this does not work as it will shoot at you so long as there isn't a solid wall between you and it. It will also shoot through the mesh floors found in industrial complexes. A crewmate in the ship looking at the monitor will see codes composed of a lowercase letter and a number. Example G4. If they type this code into the terminal, it will disable the turret for a couple of seconds, allowing anyone to pass by. However, if the, the turret cannot be disabled again until this effect is worn off, so you can't spam the code to refresh the duration. Finally, turrets hit with a shovel or stop sign, swing will malfunction and shoot in a predictable 360 degree ring around them that can be avoided easily. Landmines are the only other trap in the game at the moment, and function in a very similar manner to turrets in many ways. Landmines are also stationary and will permanently remain in the indoor map throughout the day. They are flat metallic discs that lay on the ground and emit a distinct beep and red flash of light every few seconds that warn players of the presence and location in the dark. Landmines will detonate when a player steps or jumps on them, or an item is dropped on top of them. It may be the case that players can stand on landmines safely, so long as they don't step off of them and trigger them. I have not confirmed this though. If this were true, they could possibly be saved by teleporting them off the landmine. A landmine will detonate into a large fireball that will instantly kill any player and some enemies caught within its blast radius. Just a note, I would not treat the landmine explosion as a consistent or efficient way of dealing with enemies. Like turrets again, landmines have a code made up of a lowercase letter and a number that can be typed in the ship's terminal to temporarily disable them. In the next section, indoor enemies, the bulk of Lethal Company's creatures will be found, as a typical player's day will be spent mostly indoors in the complexes. A note before starting is that most if not all indoor enemies are capable of moving within the vents found indoors. The vents act as spawn locations for them, so they can appear in the middle of a day. You'll know an enemy is coming out of a vent when this sound plays.
Starting this section off is hoarding bugs. These short hexapods will skitter around the indoor map almost constantly, making a distinct heavy tapping sound with their footsteps and a signature vocal noise heard here. They move around indoors in search of loot on the ground that they will pick up and carry back to an area indoors to find as their nest. Most of the time, a hoarding bug will not bother a player, however if it sees a player taking its items from its nest, it will become aggravated, take flight, and attack players it sees by flying into them, by dealing relatively low amounts of damage. They may also get mad if you rush by them and bump into them physically, or obviously when you attack them. That being said, the shoveler's stop sign can be an effective way of dealing with them if you can land your blows. This can be risky though as they are sometimes present in large numbers. From what I recall, a group of three is the most I've seen. Snare fleas are the first outright dangerous indoor enemy. These myriapods will lie in wait on ceilings, being near impossible to see without a light shining on them. If a player walks below them, they will drop and make a shrieking sound before chasing down whichever player walked below them. They can be outrun fairly easily, but if the snare flea catches up to a player, it will immediately latch on their head and slowly drain their health. It will also blind said player and make their voice muffled. This is often lethal for a player without crewmates around. Snare fleas can be dealt with by hitting them with a shovel or stop sign until they die. Just one hit will knock them off a player's head and they will start to run. If they get away, they will set up another ambush. Snare fleas can also be killed if they are latched onto a player's head that makes it outside, as they will die as soon as a player leaves the complex or if they are dropped into a pit when a player jumps into it. Next up are spore lizards. These large mouthed reptiles with a nice purple ball on the end of their tail are nearly entirely harmless. They wander around aimlessly until they run to a player. When this happens, they will let out a startling sound and a rattle before running away very fast from the player. On the off chance that you run into one in a closed room or in a corner, it may give you a mild bite dealing almost no damage before releasing a cloud of spores that will hinder your vision and make everything pink. There isn't much I can think to say about them, other than maybe you're thankful that you're running into one of them rather than something worse. Following spore lizards are hygro deers. These blue blobs on their own pose little threat to a player, as you have to come into direct contact with them for them to deal damage. It is hard for them to do this, as they are slow moving and low to the ground, so they can be jumped over with a well-timed jump and good movement speed. They can also be pacified, I believe, by playing a boombox next to them. I think this gets them to stop moving, but please correct me if I am wrong. They can also be aggravated when hit, causing them to move faster. In conjunction with other problems within a complex, they can cause a notable issue by blocking off necessary paths of escape or cornering players that are carrying heavy items. Again, they are pretty basic enemies that don't have a whole lot to be said about them. Moving on, next are bunker spiders. These BDI arachnids are a fairly common threat within the complexes. Whenever they first become present, they move around quite a bit making a sound similar to that of hoarding bugs, but a bit more rapid. Heard here. They move around a lot early in their presence because they are spinning webs in an area to find as their nest. If you catch them before they are done, they will sometimes freeze so long as you are around them, and they won't bother you much. After spinning these webs, the spider will remain mostly stationary, often on a wall. If a player walks into a web, they will be slowed and the spider will begin moving to their position. These webs can be destroyed th with the swing of a shovel or a stop sign. A spider will often chase a player for quite some time if they don't get far enough away or leave the complex. Spiders are low to the ground and can be jumped to avoid damage. But due to their fairly slow movement speed, other avoidance measures are recommended due to the hefty amounts of damage they can do with one bite. If a spider kills a player, they will drag them to their nest, cocoon them, and hang them from the ceiling, making it so other players cannot simply grab their body to recover it, but teleporting the body still works. Spiders can be killed with a shovel, but this process can be very dangerous. Brackens, or Flower Man, men, as the community has dubbed them, are the beginning of a subcategory I'd like to define as lethal enemies. These are enemies that you will likely die to the most indoors, and don't often see on easy moons. As far as I know, these enemies cannot be killed at least easily, so your best bet against them is to avoid them when possible. Brackens are what I believe to be the most common of these lethal enemies at the moment, as they appear in all moons at least somewhat often. In the dark, brackens will only appear as a pair of small white eyes, making them extremely unsettling and often causing panic among fresh and experienced employees alike. Under lighted conditions, it can be seen they have a tall humanoid appearance, with dark maroon skin and leaf-like protrusions that will rattle when you look at them. Brackens will silently stalk players looking for an opportunity to get behind them to snap their necks and instantly kill them. This can be prevented if a player looks at a bracken, as this will cause it to growl and back off for the time. However, only small glances should be taken and you should never walk towards it while doing this, as staring and cornering a bracken will cause it to become aggravated and chase you down at a high speed until it catches you, another player, or you escape. If you are aware of a bracken being near you, your best course of action is to take quick glances around you to scare it off before it gets too close. 
Also, being with another player who can help watch your back or distract a Bracken makes dealing with them significantly easier. A Bracken will drag off a player's body after catching them, and it will sometimes guard it, making the body difficult to retrieve by hand. If a player ever touches a Bracken, regardless of it being aware of them, it will kill them instantly by snapping their neck. Next up are Thumpers. These literal land sharks, yes that is what they are as Chondrick thieves, are what most consistently kill me personally. They can be noticed by a loud and distinct dragging sound they make while moving around. They will slowly move around rooms and hallways looking for players, key word here being looking as these monsters are completely deaf. If they notice a player, they will let out a roar and begin charging their position, picking up speed from a slow crawl to an extremely fast dash. If the thumper has to change directions while chasing you, it will lose some speed, so the best way of avoiding them is to take many turns around corners while you're trying to get away. If they catch up to a player, they will rapidly inflict damage with multiple attacks. Your best course of action is to simply work around them while avoiding open areas or long hallways where they may spot you and be able to chase you down quickly. In the middle of this subsection we have coil heads. These tall spring neck mannequins will readily kill any player who takes their eyes off them for more than a second or two, so their counter is to be actively looked at by a player. After they spawn, coil heads will travel around the indoor map at extreme speeds while looking for a player. While they are moving they make an unsettling skittering sound before making a loud and sudden door stopper like sound when they are stopped by a player looking at them. Coil heads are best dealt with when you're with at least one partner who can guide you out of rooms while you're keeping your eyes on it, or vice versa. While coil heads are kept stationary while you're looking at them most of the time, sometimes this rule seems to be broken and they move a short distance towards you quickly, so it is best to keep a few meters between you and a coil head at all times. However, sometimes it is necessary to move past one in a tight hallway. If this is the case, you can usually squeeze by one if you don't touch it, but it is generally safer to loop them into larger rooms. They can block tight passages, so it may become necessary for you to take your eyes off them so they can move out of the way. The worst case scenario is when a coil head is present with other types of enemies. Reason being because many enemies require you to quickly move a certain way to avoid them, and coil heads make it significantly harder to do anything accurately, even with another player helping you. Your best bet in a case like this is to not panic and sort things out concisely, or if needed, even sacrifice a player so not everything is lost. The log of coil heads also states that stun grenades are effective against them. I don't know the specifics about this though. Moving on, jesters are the next creature to talk about. As far as I know, they are only found on hard moons at the moment, or at the very least, very rarely on other moons. Jesters have three distinct states, beginning in a passive state. In this state, a jester will wander around until it runs into a player, who will begin to follow around. At this time, there is no active threat caused by the jester, but it is important to know that it is around. After following a player for some time, it will enter a second phase. It will stop walking and begin to turn the crank on its side, playing an increasingly unsettling rendition of Pop Goes the Weasel which will go on for some time. Once it has completed this song, it will enter a third and final phase, which is when it becomes actively dangerous. During this phase, the jester will chase down any player in the complex and instantly kill them if it catches them. Following steps should generally be taken when dealing with a jester. Letting your team know of its presence, and planning an escape route when it is noticed in its first phase. Making your way to an exit during its second phase is advised, unless you know exactly where to go. You do have time to look around a little bit longer if the second phase has just started, but it is a risk to do so. If you see other players on your way out, they may not have heard the jester start its second phase, so it's a good idea to let them know about it. During the third phase of the jester, you cannot hide from it, as it'll go for the nearest player's location without having to hear or see them. The only thing that'll buy you time is it chasing or catching another player, in which case you should already be on your way out. The jester picks up speed when chasing a player, so sticking around is not an option, and making a wrong turn can often result in death. After some time, the jester will turn to its first phase and the cycle will start over. In general, the intention of the jester as a mechanic is an event that forces all players out of the complex, making its second and third phase a good time to bring back loot to the ship, as inside the complex should be considered mostly inaccessible. The girl, or ghost, or whatever you want to call it, is the creature wrapping up this section. I was unable to get a log for the girl despite scanning on multiple occasions, so if you have it and are willing, putting in the comments below would be appreciated. Like the jester, as far as I know, the girl is only present on hard moons, and she is quite uncommon. This rarity is part due to the fact that she is only ever visible to one player at a time. This creature will haunt one player at a time, appearing as a little girl in bright clothing. This haunting is typically noticed by the haunted individual with them experiencing any combination of the following. The girl simply appearing before them all of a sudden, I see her. their hearing becoming muffled and distorted, flickering lights, this being something everyone in the crew can see, or noises the girl makes such as giggling and heavy breathing. The girl is capable of appearing outside the complex if whoever it is haunting is outside, making it fall outside of this section in some cases, as it could be considered a hybrid indoor-outdoor enemy. 
The girl will instantly kill a player who comes in contact with it, and this will typically happen with the girl skipping towards the haunted individual after some time of haunting them. On its own, the girl is not overly dangerous, but much like coilheads, it requires much of a player's attention, which can cause issues when other dangers are present. And the fact that a player's crewmates cannot help them with it makes it quite unique and foreboding to deal with. The final section of this video contains the exclusively outdoor and nocturnal enemies, meaning these enemies will only ever be present in the outdoor map at nighttime or if the Eclipse modifier is active. The Force Keepers, more commonly known as Giants, will start this section. They are very easy to notice so long as they are moving, as they make very loud, deep, rumbling sounds with their footsteps. They are also often easy to spot, as they are extremely tall and wide, but from their ventral to dorsal side they are not very thick, so if they are turned parallel to the way you are facing and immobile, they can blend in with trees on moons such as Vow and March. Giants will instantly kill any player they catch by putting them into their mouth. At the moment, a player cannot be teleported out of a giant's hand, so as soon as they are grabbed, they and the items they are carrying are doomed. They also cannot be teleported after being eaten. Giants do not get alerted by sounds, only motion, so keeping low and out of sight like their log says is the best way to keep them from chasing you. If a giant chases a player back to the ship, it will usually linger around there unless it sees something else to chase making it difficult to get into the ship for subsequent players. Often the best you can do is wait for the giant to be on the opposite side of the ship from you and get in as fast as possible. I have seen giants chasing angered circuit bees that were looking for their hive, so it seems that they are not only interested in players, but this would not be a reliable way of distracting them. You can warn crewmates of their presence with the loud horn ship upgrade, as players inside and outside of the complex will hear the horn, and if it is set as a cruel rule, will know that it signifies giants being around. At the moment, giants are only found on certain moons. These moons are all moons except for experimentation and assurance. Eyeless dogs are the second outdoor nocturnal enemy, and as the name suggests, eyeless dogs are blind. This means that they are only able to detect players by touch or sound, so crouching and avoiding making sound will allow you to maneuver around them. Any sound includes mic inputs, so talking or overly loud background noises will alert a dog. When a dog has noticed a player, it will roar and begin charging and dashing in areas near where it thinks the player is. They are quite fast while doing this, and the log states they are inaccurate, which is true, so looking at what direction they are going will help you avoid them, but don't be surprised if you get caught. Which you should try and avoid because a dog touching you will result in it instantly killing you. If multiple dogs are present in an area, the roar of one will alert others and they will swarm the area searching for whatever triggered the first dog. Due to their attraction to noise, items such as the boombox or extension ladder, which both produce lots of noise, can be dropped to lure a dog, but because a player has to drop them, it is not unlikely for the dog to dash into a player and kill them. Instead, a cheap item can be ordered and the delivery will attract dogs to an area a decent distance away from the ship, so other players can make it in. At the moment, dogs are only found on certain moons. These would be all moons except Vow. The Earth Leviathans are the last creature to be addressed in this section and the video. Earth Leviathans wander around the outdoor map underground, being invisible to the player. The only way their presence can be known before they make themselves known is by seeing them on the monitor as large red dots. They are represented by the largest dot at the moment. When they target a player, they will make a sound somewhat similar to the roar of eyeless dogs, but more muffled and milder. Once they are under the player, they will make a rumbling sound and dirt will fly up off the ground where they are about to come up from. They then jump out of the ground in this area and swallow any players and carried items, killing them instantly, and removing the items from the map. Any players killed cannot be teleported back to the ship. The, rock, the worm can be avoided by dropping heavy items to boost your movement speed, and running in a straight line when the ground starts rumbling, so you're outside of its swallowing area fast enough. The log says that retracing your steps is an effective way of avoiding the worm, but I have not tested this. The worm cannot be avoided by standing on rocks after it begins to rumble. It will simply jump up from below the rocks and eat you anyways, unlike how graboids behave in tremors. I believe earth leviathans are found on every moon, and sometimes multiple can be present. Well, that about wraps up what I have for this video, and as always, thank you for watching. Just as an ending note for anyone that's still around, it is known that Lethal Company is an early access title currently, meaning features in the game are planned to be added, changed, or fixed. Therefore, stuff in this video likely won't remain completely accurate, if at all even over time. So this video will likely only cover a fraction of what is in the game in the future. I for one enjoy these types of descriptive videos talking about and organizing specific contents of the game, so I thought it'd be fun to make one for a game that I care a lot about. If other people also like it, I would definitely consider making more parts to describe new creatures and mention changes to old ones. If you feel like anything was missing, wrong, or just want to add to your own points, please let me know in the comments, and thank you again for watching.